Hey guys, Rob here. I'm just sitting waiting for the photo buzz to start with uh, Maria and uh, John, John Butler. So I was sitting around and I was remembering a couple days ago, I was having a discussion with my daughter and we were talking about the importance of um, having a, a prosperity mindset. Now this is something I know she struggles with and I'm trying to teach her and I'm also ready to admit that in my life, it's been a major, major issue. It's, uh, it's not a coincidence that I changed my views when I changed my entire direction in life back in 1991, the year I sobered up. And uh, something else that happened around that time, I remember in the first two weeks, I uh, quit smoking. It was just like, boom, it was easy. And uh, I reminisced way back before that because I remember talking to one of my old old girlfriends his parents and they were talking about quitting smoking and something he said and it applies to what I'm about to reveal to you or talk about right now I remember the dad he said that in order to quit smoking you had to have a major personality shift and in my naive messed up immature irresponsible badass brain at the time I always remembered that and I believe it's a thing, and I believe it's a thing that applies to anybody who's struggling with anything, whether it's uh, dealing with weight, weight loss, cigarettes, any kind of addiction, alcohol, drugs. I mean, it varies according to the addiction, I'm sure, you know. But uh, yeah, that's what happened to me, a major personality shift when I sobered up and I uh, immediately quit smoking. I was highly addicted to smoking. I loved smoking. I couldn't quit. But I quit two weeks after sobering up. And uh, eventually within, oh, I'm going to say within the first year, I started shifting my mindset on prosperity. And, you know, I was 31 years old at the time. And uh, it took me a couple of years to really put it into play. But things really improved quite a bit. And they really improved after I uh, got married and had a family and got real serious about a lot of this stuff. So much so, the changes that I went through and the principles that I sort of invoked in my life and I believe in to this day, I put in a, um, I put in a, I'm just looking at the no BS form here. I did a way back in 2012, that's 10 years ago, unbelievable. I did a webinar on prosperity, wealth attraction, strategies for photographers. Highly recommend you all look at it. It's in the forum and uh, it's about, uh, ooh, I'm gonna say it's about an hour long, an hour and a bit. I know the first five or six minutes, it took us a while to get going, but you gotta be patient and get through that part. I talk about a lot of really important stuff and uh, this is so, so, so key because it's a major, major shift. It's like, ugh, it's like when you hear you, you ever heard that saying, people talk about, um, you know, after your seven years of age, your mind, you're, you're, you're sort of like locked in, which they've proven to be not true. I mean, you can change a lot of your beliefs. You can change a lot of the stuff that you learned in the first seven years of life. You can change it. It's harder, but it's possible. And with that in mind, uh, all the strategies that I talk about and all my experiences are completely 100% relevant. So, you know, I talk about stuff like the difference between entrepreneurial prosperity thinking versus entitlement thinking. So your mindset's absolutely key. But I also talk about one of the most important uh, uh, sort of uh, experiences that I had back in the early days. And that was when I, I found this book, actually it was recommended to me by a buddy of mine called Earn What You Deserve. And it was um, Gerald Mundus who wrote that book. And let me show you, hold on. Earn What You Deserve. There's a list of uh, typically what makes up under earners. And there's a list of 19. Now you see this list right here. I have it as a JPEG and it's in the form. The replay 
is in the form. It's under uh, mar marketing and publicity for profits, wealth attraction, goal setting webinar. It's uh, it's very very good. I have to say so myself. And I have this. Uh, let's just open this up in the new tab. Okay, so there it is. And I've had this same one printed and laminated way back in the early 90s. And I had it in my, my bedroom for many, many years. Even years after I got married, my wife, uh, she saw it. She thought, well, that's pretty cool. Let's keep it up. And it's a good reminder so of what are typically, you know, descriptions of under, under earners. Let's touch on a few right now. Uh, one, are usually in debt. Well, that was me. Two, have little savings, few assets. Well, that was me. Okay, I had a car, but it was an old beater. I had a camera system, and it was an old beater system. Uh, three, are often in financial crisis. 100% me. Four, feel pain, stress, fear over money. Absolutely, 110%. Uh, five, do a lot of unpaid work, volunteer, charity, or showcase work. I didn't have this one so much, but I see a lot in others. And I think a lot of the reason is they have a mindset that they don't feel worthy of success, so they sort of make up for it by doing this sort of stuff. Six, often come from alcoholic or otherwise troubled families. Let's say dysfunctional families. Seven, may resent people with money. Yeah, that was me, very petty thinking. Eight, are good at finding enablers. Nine, have a vague idea what their expenses are. 10, are workaholic or work in cycles of excess and collapse or don't work at all. 11, see the gross, not the net. 12, may think there is a spiritual or political virtue in not having money. 13, are proud of their ability to make do with little, as little as possible. 14, believe their occupation won't allow them to make more money. 15, Often have clothes or possessions that are old, worn out, or insufficient. 16, feel that eventually something will happen to make, their, make things better. 17, fill their free time with endless little tasks and chores, you know, keeping busy. Seven, uh, 18, feel, fear spending money and resentful when they must, but sometimes go on buying binges. And 19, believe money would cure all their problems. So, you know, on the bottom I had these three highlights. Do not debt. These are rules. Do not take work that pays you less than you need. And do not say no the money. So there's more, there's more to it than that. But this is a good starting point. Don't you agree? Now, I've taught in my city a goal-setting workshop once a month for many, 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 many years. And every once in a while I would talk about prosperity principles and I would bring this list and uh, in, in general, just in, in talking about it with people. And it's kind of weird the way a lot of people or a certain percentage of them would be really offended by this list. They disagreed with it or they literally would almost like start crying. They would have a strong emotional reaction to it. The thing that I found weird is oftentimes they didn't do anything about it. And it's, you'd think they would because when you think about the fact that if you're going to have a strong emotional response to something like this, don't you think it's telling you something? Maybe it's okay to get okay with money. Maybe it's okay to be okay with success. Maybe it's okay to push yourself to new heights, a new mindset, a new way of thinking. It's scary. It's adventurous. But uh, I think it needs to be done. Many of us have a lot of the struggles and a lot of the the problems that I bring up in this presentation that I'm talking about. You know, the stuff you used to hear growing up and all of the cultural messages that you got. So, you know, it's okay. It's a responsibility. Money is nothing but frozen energy and what we do with it determines who we are. So it could, in a sense, reveal more of who you are. So I say let that happen. Be strong. Be prosperous. And above all, be successful. Okay? If you have any comments, I want to hear about them. And subscribe. Please hit the like and subscribe. Thank you.